the hawk shot behind it. I think that EG is looking to pressure the jungle matchup and pick apart Closer and Navidaga here. It turns out they made playoffs after all. As now Ignar's gonna get himself an anchor toss in the back, goes in for the stun FBI at half HP, but it's lower for Danny. He's ignited, and that might be the last tick to kill him. No, just barely stays alive. Teleport's coming across down the bottom lane someday on the way out, but impact has been found. He is knocked one up into the air, but where does he even get to go? The anchor's gonna find him. He is not gonna get to flash to safety and first slot for 100 Thieves. And Probably still dies he, while being down a summoner. Yeah, he for sure knows he's dead in that scenario. Four people surrounding him already. Yeah. But in the day, obviously First Blood looks good, and now Jisuke going to be flash-rooted. Anchor's going to come in yet again, and 100 Thieves find their second kill as Ignar is forced to flash to run away, will survive under the turret, but a 2-0 start to 100 Thieves. Or uh, last weekend from Vulcan, looks like it's going to be a very deep transition with the Realm Warp into the dive. Oh my word, how do you get out of this one? Danny was flashless, no heal. Closer will live, no kills yet, but EG own this part of the jungle. Who he going to find an anchor in. Decent damage onto Ignar, and that's going to be Leona dropping. Fourth kill on the board for 100 Thieves. Closers here is level six on the Viego. He'll pick up the eyeball on top of it. They can just snowball this early lead. Gold advantage just keeps growing. All right, he gets stun in the mid lane as evil genius's Jazuke has to dodge away. But hold on, there's a fight on the top side. All right, close enough, but the rest of the damage is going to come across. Who he had landed the anchor, and Jisuke did not flash the anchor. He held it so far really unstopped. All right, now we got to look for the possible counter punches from Evil Geniuses, though. They have Ash Arrow, they have Leona Ultimate. They are positioning around the crab. It's just a interesting okay. flank. Stun, nice kick, flash on FBI. That was beautiful by contracts, but is there anything more to be done? Yes, who he dropping now as well. A 2-0 start impact on the side. Going to be someday dropping. A one kill, finally traded back as Closer knocks down the Lee Sin. Can there be anything left to go there? Go. Ult comes in, wants Ignar. Pretty tanky, but finds that second kill. Wants to keep going. Stun now onto Danny, gets the <laughs> resets. A triple kill. Closer for the side of EG. Even with the team fighting setup here, they're just going to get caught out. Impact dropped down a half HP below 1,000. Can they dive him? Ulti not going to be used in the flash to safety with 100 health. TP not available. 5v4 on the map. Bottom river should be claimed. Scuttle. Yeah, you can't get that one contract. Yeah. This one's given away as well. No ultimates left for the team fight here for EG. Take the objective. Scale for late. <laughs> Maybe we can win a team fight later. You know, uh, get some Ornn upgrades front to back. But 100 Thieves can continue splitting, playing the map. Then they section out Jazuke. Nowhere for him to go. And they get the kill. That's, I like that one. You can see, yeah, he's indeed going to walk back. Doesn't want to get collapsed upon. Now a fight in the mid lane. Those stuns going to land. Decent damage onto Danny. He is flashless, but a shield bow pops. Going to stay alive for now. And FBI, his days are numbered. The arrow is going to land, and Danny finds the snipe. Orn back in as well. Knock up onto the Renekton. This could be the kill. Gorgon buys a time, but not long enough. Get the other kill guaranteed with the long range of that ultimate. Nice mid little push here from EG. 1v1, though. Jazuke likes his chances. Yeah, okay. A little bit of damage here. Obviously, Merc Treads are in. Decent amount of health for Abadaka, but he's almost in lethal range. That Q dodge is pretty important. How about the next round of cooldowns? Control Ward in. Ult nearly knocks him down. Next skill shot will kill. And I don't know if he has a way out. He can get some poke, but he's going to die to an auto attack. Challenge now for 100 Thieves is trying to use the little bit of advantage that they still have to make use of their one. Oh, never Big mind. Done huge damage. Goodbye to Huhi. And how about the rest of it? A flash to safety for Abadaga. Decent damage on the Lee Sim, but has to run away. What a pick. EG, find one and knock him down. 100 Thieves have to utilize their 1 3 1 because, and it ends up being Huhi in this case. Nautilus down, Dragon achieved, and yet no side pressure. 400 thieves during the meantime there. Now they're going to actually again. collapse on mid once more. They just okay. Flash stun. Lands the W. Abadaga. Yes. Kicked. Q. Follow through. Contracts finds one. And now FBI is forced to run away. Contract stays safe with the shield of safety. And it's another couple of kills. It's a one for nothing, I should say. EG. Just <laughs> better team fighting in the mid game.
Very, very nice usage there. Contracts is going to take a decent amount of damage, but not Flash. as much as FBI. In for Ignar. Does not get the kill. FBI able to trade his Flash to stay safe. Fish around for your Realm Warp opportunities. Ooh. Syndra, you can see, is at the minions, but oh. here goes the arrow. Oh, knock up, not going to land. Good stun by Huhi, but how about the kill in the front line? Is it going to be enough damage as they're pushed back? Yul comes across, and it's a one for zero. It's a two for zero. 100 thieves. Are able to win the fight as close looks a little bit clean on the lease and it walks over. Baron is alive, no enemy jungler available. While Jizuke does have teleport, it still takes a long time to channel, and you could see Ash Arrow thrown out before teleport even started channeling, so he wasn't there. They didn't have the extra damage to follow up on their engage, and now Baron gonna force their hand once again. Impact healing up off the honey fruit. Realm warp sort of pinch them off. Can they find the kill? It's only some they knocked up. He's gonna find a stun. Jazuke built a lot of space, but impact could still be rooted. Will indeed be so. That'll be the rest of the damage they need. He flashes, but the Q, not quite a kill, but now it is. Someday comes across for the third straight kill. Stun onto Danny. Shield bow, not gonna be enough. Four in a row now, and it's time to watch out for Jazuke. Yep, only gonna pop the Sterics, and someday pushed back without an ulti. There's just not enough threat from the Syndra. Be careful, next round of spells could kill. And indeed, they will back off. A four to nothing fight. And it's going to be 100 Thieves having to flinch yet again. Uh, there hasn't been a dragon look for the last 30 seconds, though it's been alive as the teams danced around Baron. But now, huge stun finds two. Hmm. Buys a bit of time, and Contracts plus Danny are able to grab the third dragon. And it only gets harder from here if 100 Thieves. Uh, other than that, trying to avoid the big burst from Rise. Anchor on the front line, but again, that's not the target you want to kill. It is hard to burn through, and Orin is going to jump backwards, and now you can't walk any farther forward. Cooldown's missing. Ult comes across, finds a stun, is going to catch FBI as well, but first, it is Huhi who drops. They can try to burn down the Lee Sim, but able to jump to safety. Yeah, Low on health. Can he get the resets? Yes, and that might just be enough. Danny drops right afterwards, and suddenly, it is a fight won by 100 Thieves, 2-1. to one. Oh my goodness, these fights where Viego's dropping down to 100 HP, Freak. So close to getting burst down in that knockup and not getting the reset. But Closer goes for it and Closer gets it. And my goodness, my friend. But he is the difference maker in this game. All right, Contract's actually getting it. Oh my. His. That's a stopwatch. That's not going to do a ton for you. Yeah, it bounces off of Impact, and he's still been solo killed. Flash <laughs> over the wall to get the ulti who he wants in, and Impact can slowly waddle away. He's going to save the Flash. He's going to let himself die closer. Abadaga is definitely going to keep on blasting for the rest of this game, and that's just a heartbreaker for Evil Geniuses because they were so close in setting up to that breaking point of being able to force on the next. If they're just chasing after you from objective to objective, from ward to ward, that means Rise gets to destroy the base. Inhibitor fully taken, plus Realm Warps out to the bottom side of the map, pushes in bottom side, means you get to threaten the Baron again with red and white guns. Aphelios melts it. Lee Sin is around. He's going to jump into the pit. Does Contrast get the steal? They focus him 1,200. 1300 he is down and it is smited it is taken okay what else is going to happen now for 100 thieves as they took the lease in it is indeed closer who secured it don't get your tooltips twisted as now ignar will drop in leona is gonna betray danny one of us is better at landing those skills and it may just be closer down goes ash three for zero plus the baron Dragon alive in 10 seconds, and that's about how long EG's base will last as well. Closer has yet to die this game. Viego pop off, definitely in effect. It looks like they're gonna finish out the rest of this base. Inhibitor down mid lane is toast as well. With Baron buff, they can keep on pumping. Here we go, time to end the game in the four versus two. The soul laners of evil geniuses, the Contracts up, largest bulwarks of their power. FBI, though, threatened by the Syndra, really unable to get turret damage. In fact, the kick flash from Lee Sin. FBI's shield bow pops. There's a Guardian Angel there as well. Lock his shield is in. That is now popped. How about the rest of this fight, though? Because Contracts might lose a Guardian Angel as well. Jizuke easily in to secure that kill alongside his Lee Sin, but who he is back for vengeance. GA, though, still not popped. Means it might not be enough. And meanwhile, Abadaga has knocked down a single turret. Gonna flash away and stay alive, but EG have won the first half of the team fight. They've gotten the one for zero. The other half, though, is it going to be enough? It will be the Lee Sin dropping as Contracts falls. It is now a 4v4 on the map. Baron buff is gone. A single turret has been slain. 
The second one, the one that impossibly <laughs> will not be attacked. So evil geniuses so far weather the storm, but 100 Thieves are still right at the gates, howling, hoping to find their next <laughs> way in. The turret is getting dangerously low, but it will stay alive. That 100 Thieves scramble, baby. They're using this. Obviously, it is still a huge deficit, and 100 Thieves are feeling great as they're pushing to mid. The flash ult's going to land. Ash's days may be numbered. They dive on in, closes around. Ult's going to land, and they find that first kill. FBI gets the kill credit. As they're going to push in for a second. The entire bot lane is dead. Duo kill for the bot laner. Abadaga finds the third, and that is going to be it. Who he starts to fight, and his teammate are certain to end it. 100 Thieves in a back and forth fight take game one against Evil Geniuses. 100 Thieves deliver the wake up call to the LCS and try and get those hard engagements off to now actually having way more options in this game. You push out the wave, you get your jungler priority, and then jungler comes up to help deny some of these minions contracts. Could smite it, does, but now how about the rest of that fight? Because closer's burned all his cooldowns. Flash E, there's a slow on a someday, and a flashless gangplank has no way out. Perfect shot on the oranges. Grasp is not gonna be enough. First blood comes through for EG, and Abadaga is gonna get followed. He'll be slowed and he will be killed. A double for Jazuke, oh, and Closer got to run. The Sonic Wave lands, and Closer gets a single kill. Resets him, <laughs> gets the second. <laughs> the better Lee Sin has showed up, and he plays for 100 Thieves. A triple kill. The man can do no wrong. Oh, my goodness. If Closer, a three-kill Viego, can melt through the dragon, yeah. no problem. Gets to go over there on reset timer from Evil Geniuses. So, Monster Viego, who's already looking towards Impact, who has no flash. Okay, good luck surviving this one. The stun is going to be dodged away from, but the rest of the damage may just be enough. Knocks back someday, and they don't quite have the damage. Today. They don't have it. The flash shut down, closer shut down. is going to drop to a tower. Impact dodges the skill shots and leads them into their doom. Contracts now in for a bit more. Wants his next slow to come across someday. Going to get back under the turret, sidesteps the shock blast, Ooh. and there is no dive to be had. Flashes and still dies. Woo! Well, three in mid versus two. I'm like trying to set up the bait. Oh, they're going to find Alistair. They're sitting on wards. The flash stun comes across, but with everything else on, they're going to be okay for now. The ult uh. is safety for closer, and Contracts will be able to walk away with his life as well, but who he cannot. T take this one down to two plates, pop Rift Herald, finish it up. Not too much impact can do about it. You know he's got no reinforcements because Jazuke is mid, and Abadaga is close enough to stop the teleport, so that's his first turret bonus. Get paid. Nicely done. All right, money to spend for the jungler and top laner. Number one was pretty close with their team fight set up. This one, a bit better for their liking. Everybody oh, up flash. top. I don't think someday survives, but he's got impact really low, forcing the kick away from contracts and buying a lot of time here is someday playing in the fog, playing with barrels, but he's left alone. He finds the kill and impact and he's got reinforcements and it's a shutdown coming through for Abadaga. Ignar is up next, a three for zero fight, the 100 Thieves and maybe a fourth contract. Suddenly he wants a new clause. He's going <laughs> to drop down. He'll be rooted in place and Abadaga finds his second kill. Two auto attacks will kill it sometime later and that'll be a, a nice boon hmm top lane 3v2 potentially that word spots up a, like a lot Asking more closer. row mark the flash ahead but that's gonna cancel it really well done by ignar absolutely no way out except for damage and he's not gonna find the kill shut building very anti-tank kraken slayer into last whisper is not the most important building to be honest even uh, against the Leona, I might lands. consider something else, but mid lane is more important. There is no way out, Jazuke. Once that slow is on you, even a Jin root is going to be instant death. So they throw out the the multiple ultimates to get that flash off Here the Zinfra, go. then they make the play on side lane. Big play, is it enough numbers though? Because it's four for Evil Geniuses the and only heck? three for 100 Thieves. They've been collapsed upon. The trap has been set and it clamps shut. <laughs> Double Cooper just on a rock dump to safety. The ult not gonna mean much for Jin as Ignar tanks the shots 
and they will not get a single kill. Cardiac walks in, Gorge Winkers and walks right back out, pops a shield, stun's gonna land at two, and Impact's coming around as well. FBI dropped low, Ignar gonna stay alive. Does Impact go for the dive? Flashes in, Abadaga is down, and Evil Genius has get the three for nothing. And EGR playing on the edge, Freak, just barely escaping with their lives. FBI once for flashing forward to try and get his kill onto Alistar, Corrupting Potion, just yep. barely not taking enough to take him down either words. Now is going to be reset for a dragon, Yo. though. Here we go. Yeah, 700 gold apart right now. EG going to try to find their way in, but no, it's who he leading in first. Big damage in the back line, and impact drops. One for nothing, kill to the Jin. How about the other side? The Obadaga kicking out of the pit and drops that as well. Smite fight going to be soon, Closer. and it is claimed by the jungler on EG's side. It is contracts taking it. One for one so far. Each team has lost a solo lane. So there is some vision that has not been denied. And this is uh, truly crucial. Uh, finding a location around there where you're kind of dodging away because Danny is certainly hitting Baron Nasher, and that means it's time for Hunter Thieves to answer. And they got to do it fast because, as you mentioned, this cruise has become choppy, and it's a GP ult to spot it. EG burning it down and smited. Secured. Time to get away now. And so far, so good. It's been clean to get out. Stun's going to land on Alistair, not the ideal target. Being able to have, you know, the, the confidence in your AD carry splitting later on really bodes well for Goes Evil the stun, Geniuses. Finds a good bit of damage on Jizuke, does have flash, gets a stun, closer ults to safety, re-engage, comes Kick. across, kick back into the team, and he will drop. The KDAs keep rising, Huhi just getting shot at by Danny, dropped the half HP, and now mid to under fire and will be knocked down as well. It's going to be Mountain Soul on top, and that is going to be EG with a huge resurgence in this series. They yeah. instantly answer back. They're not going to force until he uh, you know, goes back to finish that. You should probably wait for a reset. Here's a Realm oh. play, though. And again, Jizuke able to identify it in time, lands his stun, and is still able to hold his flash. That's two fights in a row where they really went for him. Has not gone Zonius, but Cosmic Drive and the boots too has been enough to get him out of the way. Huge stun, who he gonna be deleted? And Tristana Look at just that. dives the back line. Danny is unperturbed what? in his first playoffs. He will dive your entire base and it will fall to shambles. The Bud Light Ace, Evil Geniuses fire right back and they are gonna completely slaughter here in game two. They never let go once they were given that that lead around level six, and they will crush 100 Thieves. Damn, Danny! I feel like if both teams, and correct me if I'm wrong, if they if they play their comps essentially optimally. It is actually required the Syndra ban, and now on the LeBlanc. Meanwhile, it's a top lane focus first time around here for Contracts, as well as Closer, but Contracts is here first. In a 2v1, he slowed, and he is first blood. Execution damage for these early fights is so, so threatening the that they have to give up priority. This is so beneficial for Hunt the Thieves. Flash stun, impact gonna be locked in, and impact gonna be knocked down, thanks to Ignite coming through for Huhi. Is still gonna get there basically when they get to the turret yep. though. So let's track what is lost overall, because right now it fight, is fight. a full wave. Oh, Spike comes through for contracts, ult away for close, but the Q's still gonna land. The kick back and the shutdown in Danny. But instant summon in mid lane. This is going to be all of the rest of, <coughs> excuse me, of mid turret going down. <laughs> uh, they'd already out of the first two plates. They get the third with some extra work. Still will be claimed by closer. Auto smite would take it. Wants to pull it away from smite range. Oh, he doesn't have smite up. That's why he can't do it. And it's going to let it reset because contracts could have. But now a huge CC combo goes off out of the mid lane. And just going to flash the safety. Gets the chain up and will not live. Closer is in and closes help to find a new disguise, ults in, finds the stun, finds the double kill. And once again, it is the closer. Diego finds another one, but the big setup for it, Freak. So they're able to land this consecutive CC, burst them down low enough for closer to come flash ult in, get the execution Ooh. impact. Sidestep on the flash Zenith blade, but ultimately uh, gets the barrel in his face and goes down to someday. And I knew you were trying, you were about to force it because yeah. you can tell with your setup. Yeah. <laughs> you have this cadence. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, Jizuke, he's about to get uh, Tower Dove. Yeah. Which version of this one? Which three is it going to be? It's closer. Ooh. It's Huhi and Someday. That's the dive we're looking for. But Huhi, yes, gets out of turret aggro in time. You've got a lot of split map advantage for 100 Thieves, while EG 
they don't have any security for their split pushers. They keep getting chunked out. Dezuke's not getting out of this one either. Distortion, Mimic, guess correctly. Yes, it's gonna land. Auto Q is gonna secure the kill. FBI now on the board, six to two in this game. They don't get to push after picking off their kill too. So Minion Wave moved up someday on the chase, but Impact dodges away from two barrels, gets hit by the third. And he's gonna land the auto attack for the move speed as well. So Impact's gonna try to run away with the, the gate, get some decent damage. Does someday survive it? Yep. True shot brush, guess is wrong. Someday takes the solo kill over Impact. Next teleport that comes up from Evil Geniuses is Impact, and guess what? It will already be answered by Someday's. With that Rift Trail, they'll just blow open mid lane as well. It gives you more area to work with. And 100 Thieves sticking to the game plan here. And it is going to be Dragon number two, setting yourselves up for Soul Point. All right, set this up to halfway. He's known for roaming around. He he always looks for these flank angles. And if you set that up, you've got plenty of burst damage in a LeBlanc, in a Lee Sin to try and follow up. They're going for it, but they kick for disengage instead. Decent damage. Contracts will be stunned. They flash in for the combo, and they won't quite kill him. Gorger can buy some time, but Abadaga is in and gets the first kill of the fight. Second one going to be a stun onto LeBlanc. Jazuke going to be attacked. Nearly trades one back, but oh, will not alive. quite get it. Everyone stays alive. 100 Thieves off to a 2-0 team fight. And that swing and a miss really, really bodes poorly for this game for EG. Getting damage on bottom side and probably finishing up that turret. You actually see him now, he went past the tower, he's full recalling. So EG want to make us, oh, he cancels it. Okay, he... mid is still happening then, as the turret is full health, but the wave is still just barely alive. They'll knock those down and we'll get a little bit done. So Jazuke is going to stay in the side lane. Look at this, it is uh, two to one in turrets. Mid tier two, bot tier two killed 400 thieves. Jazuke is going to trade back top lane tier two and Honestly, with that deficit, yeah. That's not horrible when no. you're against, you know, the Red Bull Baron power play, and you're like, you know, we got one turret back for it. 100 Thieves very happy with the cards that they've been able to gain for themselves through this game. I do like the choice there from Danny, though. He critically holds his flash on Aphelios. So that big damage. Yeah! <laughs> Abadaga gets a solo kill. Yet another on the career. Two and a half minutes away for an Infernal Soul that removes even more of the possibilities of a comeback because you'll immune a Shock Blast, you'll immune the first third of uh, LeBlanc's damage, and now they're going for a Baron Sneak. As Closer and Abadaga just putting in the damage, happy to let this Viego tank the shots. It's not going to be a problem, and they will burn this down. FBI shows up just to make sure. Has found its mark, you know, being able to Rune Prison and also having Leona as far as stun follow-up. Stun follow-up is in. Closer gets the kill as the Rampage. Suzuki is down. I don't want to leave him underserved. Who he has been the one doing most of the setups. The Zero highlight six. reels are Viego, but who he has been locking these people down. He's missed out on one kill from his team this entire game. I really want to sing his praise because he has been a huge huge factor in this one. Somebody let me know what the responses in all chat have been for this game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I, I know that they're going to be them. 100 Thieves fighting back here. Looks like with Baron Buff, this one is going to the Nexus. Absolutely. Huhi, though, dropped low, has to burn a lot of cooldowns, nearly drops the Realm Warp to say, hey, you know what? We don't need top to be pushed. We'll bring the minions ourselves uh -huh. from bot lane. They get the triple and hib just for good measure. Maybe not quite. Health bars get low. And keep in mind, Dragon Souls in 25. It's basically a 3,000 gold swing and change just to secure a Dragon Soul. Just claim it for good measure. Nice deletion, though. Jazuke may have actually delayed that move as they're not going to find much for the Hunter Thieves' side. Mm. It's time to run away. Is there anything to be done in a 5v4, though? Yeah, a bit, but as one turret falls, the recalls come in. Is there a chance they can rush this down? Almost setting up for close to execute Jazuke, but not going to happen. And it might just be that EG are stuck in their base, that's... and it will still be Dragon Soul for Thief. Yeah, that's a rise teleport over there. Here we go. Okay, knock back and forth. Closer tries to get away. Has the flash, has the ult, and now just going to run on his two legs. Flash follow for impact, but not in range. And Closer will just barely make his escape. No yep. jungler necessary. Obadaga teleported out there. Rise can annihilate it. Can Ignar find the opening? 
Maybe so, as this is going to be a fair bit of damage. Dungeons are going to be able to jump right back out. They've kicked in the support. Who's going to burn his stopwatch to buy time? Closer dropped half HP hit with the ulti to punt in, and who he is down. One for zero, but they trade supports back, as looks like Ignar will drop as well, unable to flash as he was rune prisoned. And just destroyed by Ryze's damage out. But the fight continues, though, with impact and a half HP. Abadaga just belting out Overload still. Wants to give it more, but Contract's able to safeguard two. You have it. Safety. But there's only one turret left alive inside the base. None of these are not going to be stopped here. These shields, of course, come back up out of combat, and they're tanky yet again. The Fountain uh, adding a bit of the same to EG on their side as they're going to go back and forth. Contracts going to look for the Q, not going to land it here. Dropped low, closer even lower. And FBI cannot quite find that last kill. Still sitting alive inside the base, waiting for the next little push forward as they're going to find the Rune Prison and the kill into Open impact. Up. A good setup by Abadaga. Turret is still alive for now. The chase in. Jazuke gets the shutdown to keep his team alive. 3v3 going for a bit more. Contracts the front line will be knocked down and he will not get up again. EG may be kept down in this one as Abadaga pops the Zonias, gets more damage. Danny pops his own stopwatch. FBI times the Q, and he's there for the rest of the kills. The mid laner gets the last hit. The Nexus will fall 15 to 5. One final kill traded back, but it's game over. <laughs> Two to 100 Thieves. And I think who he is positioned in this game to really affect this mid lane matchup because it's going to take two more clears for him. Meanwhile, Nautilus gank on a flashless Lucian. Ooh, they're gonna find the Rupert. They know he's flashless. They know he has absolutely no way out. This should be a guaranteed kill. Exhaust for the slow for good measure. Q is gonna land. Very early on to 8.15. Rift Herald already about to drop. Fight. And that will be no. slain by contract. Zankertas not gonna find Jazuke. He's able to jump away. There's so much burst potential. But All they right. catch Braum. And on Ignar, he still has Flash, but the shield up, he's going to be fine. Team is going to There it is, here comes a fight. And Diana leads it yep. in, and Diana shuts down Abadaga. How about the rest of this battle, though? Four versus three. Going to find the knockup onto Viego, and Closer forced to actually stay around. The health bar is getting low on Evil Genius. His one for zero. All it's going to happen in the exhaust. Oh. Is it enough? He whiffs the Flash. Oh, 3v3 no, no. over Crab! It's a fight for the Crab. Ulti coming across from Nautilus, finds all three stuns. Danny dropped a bit low, but he's gonna be okay. Diana gets the ulti, but no damage. Contracts jumped upon, and FBI finds the kill. Contracts may well be dead. So that is gonna be 100 Thieves. Huge victory in the bottom river. What does Suzuka have to say about it? Well, he pushed, or sorry, slow Dragon game. It feels more and more the top teams are uh, much more interested in turret pressure than dragon pressure, as you often get the first one killed pretty late in, which is the teammate feels good. You know, you two are doing awesome, and they can keep it going. This time, we will get the first Rift Summon of the game, and it will indeed guarantee mid lane outer turret falls. Well, we will see if they're able to get any damage into tier two, but it seems unlikely. They're going to push hard on top side and try to trade this dragon for some of that standing gold. Top tower will definitely go down to them, pushing on bottom side because they don't want to have to use his teleport and they're so worried about it. His contract's a viable option, still has flash, burns it right away, gonna still be ulted. Orin Horn coming across, knock up onto two, and that means big damage on Abadaga. Gets away, but a rocket jump is in for the chase. Buster Ooh. jump puts him at 50 and impact as the flash follow. Huge by Danny. But on the other side of the map, they're going right back in. FBI ults in off the teammate, and that's two kills. Closer gets the resets. Huge knockout by who? He had huge target awareness by FBI. That anchor toss was perfect, though your mid laner is down. He is not needed. It is a three for nothing, and hey, Kobe, there's a bear in the tank. <laughs> Nice cast of curse there, Freak. Danny, what can he do about it? Danny and Impact, the only two left. Teleport comes through, but Baron is dropping so quickly. 5K and counting. No ults for either one, but they've got a front line. They've got a decent chance of dealing some damage. Closer dropped a bit low, but does have his smite. He could die. Gets his smite in time. Will not quite drop to Triss. The red buff burn makes it happen. But I'm sorry, you are going to die, Impact. How's this fight going to look? Danny level 13. One level up in FBI and has both summoners on the Tristana. First dragon reset comes in as they had juggled aggro back and forth, and it walks back into the pit. 
Knockups come across, impact pretty low. Put down a half HP, Ignar almost gone, but not dead just yet. Someday Barrel only hits Danny. First Naga comes across, it's Huhi in the front line, and Huhi just deletes himself for the engage, and oh, it's not enough damage out of the jungler. Already Diana is down, and Closer is hungry for more. Looking for impact to drop, may just have it happen. Jazuke gonna be stunned, <laughs> and he's just not gonna kill Braum. He's used to be cold, the Koling does nothing, and they're gonna find the rest going forward. A shutdown comes through for FBI as well. That's the kind of fight you wanna see. The Bud Light Ace comes through for 100 Thieves. And the 100 Thieves! are going to take what's not given to them since 2018, Freak. They're looking to take this series. They're looking to take a top three spot in the LCS, and they're looking to take a trip to Worlds. The Baron buff will allow them inside the base. Inhibitor towers are down. Just a landslide victory in that last fight. And then you give up other areas of the map. So all that's important for 100 Thieves now is during the split push to get something off mid. They're going right. to have to bring Danny and... Yeah, that's just a lot of damage. A great stopwatch immunes the ulti in from Danny, but gets the rocket jump slow. The next dragon's up to two and a half. That's not the important part. It's Baron spawning. And all of EG and Fog means who he has to check. Gets caught up, puts the ulti across, and will not... Die! Gets the flash away. Danny forced out as well. Tristana finally gets the kill. That's a reset. 5v4. Is it winnable? Oh, it's not when contracts get deleted just like that. And they're going to go for a bit more. The flash in. Closer can taste blood. He wants it. Oh. And he is going to ruin every single kingdom that EG have ever seen. As another one goes down. One death, but three kills. And Baron is right in front of the noses. But so is the EG base. Just a small hiccup there, Freak for 100 Thieves with the pickoff earlier. What a team fight. They find the collapse this time around. That's going to be Baron number two for the 100 Thieves. And this one, they'll get to march all the way inside the base. How crazy is it watching a lot of these fights where... Uh, so we have the Eclipse upgraded. Uh, Syzygy, I believe. Just Danny goes. Hold on, okay, big fight. Someday dropped dangerously low, but not gonna die to the calling as he is out of the radius, and now it's the runaway for EG. Ignar's already popped the locket, Closer wants in, but might not find the kill, so won't do so. Abadaga's already walked in with the Realm Warp, and it's time to run away yet again for EG. Impact will find himself stunned up, immunes the knock for the stun, of course, still goes through. That's how that one works, as Closer gets away with the explosive charge, mid inhibitor is down. Eat some oranges, use your ultimate, kites out, allows for the rest of the team to come rescue. They take the mid inhibitor, they take the dragon. And that is dragon number three. He's still undefeated Tristana, he's fighting with his life, with his team to try and keep their hopes alive, but Realm Warp inside like and that it. tower is down. Who needs to play wave control when you can bring the wave yourself? And it's going to be pushing in a bot side. Inhibitor not down just yet. Stun's going to come across onto only two who he deleted. And now we watch the rest of the fight. Huge damage to the Ignar. He will drop as well. One for one. But they've knocked it up. Danny! Danny! And Danny's in for another. But now he is down. Someday left alone after the Tristana triple kill. He and his jungler may not have the damage they need. A 2v3 is not going to happen. Danny picks up a triple. He may have died, but it was a game saving fight anyone <laughs> on his team if he finds the stun hook right onto the orange little tiny tower there okay here is the knockup but only on a who he is that a good enough fight oh he's almost deleted nearly down pops the shield gpo buys a lot of space and that means eg gonna walk back rocket jump buys a bit of space but still has to burn the stopwatch good barrel damage the front line might die it's eg forced to run no a damage on abadaga nearly kills him off contracts gonna be low gonna be dropped one for nothing push back now no one's left alive they've got to run they've got to run no danny steps up and danny shuts down one mid laner is dead though and oh! it's gonna be another kill oh! in danny is doing danny! Danny! Danny shuts down FBI. The rookie of the year puts his team on his back, but he's one versus two. Someday and Abadaga can only watch him knock down the wave as they can't push the base without minions. And Danny single-handedly keeps EG in the upper bracket. It's Danny versus the world. It's Danny versus the 100 Thieves. And Danny Danny's going to get one. Danny could get two. Holy God, he's so damn good at this game i think that is an unofficial pentakill by the way i think he got a triple in the main fight 
Danny has immaculate aim. We'll see what else he can do because this game has closed up pretty tightly. Who he just gets deleted from the calling, and this could be a game-winning push. Baron buff is on. They want the middle inhibitor. Contracts gets Abanaga, and everyone else is just gonna fall. Bow to the new king of the LCS. It is Danny leading the charge. Evil geniuses. We're in a three versus five, and Danny took them all by himself. They're gonna get the rest of the turrets. They're gonna get the rest of the kills. Down goes the rest. We're hearing the players scream. We couldn't be more excited for the next Bud Light Ace for the game to end and bring on the silver scrapes. Danny is your new god. I think it's all about Viego. I think okay. that Viego has decided so much. I need to see Sven Skarin just... Yeah, I mean, just ultimately, right? Like, why not have an exhaust once in a while? It's going to do more for you in a game than I feel like Grass will. You still run the same two trees. Timing. Lose much. Oh, yeah, this timing is good. Stun's going to land. Going to find the next slow as well. And someday, may just not have a way out. The flash is late. Still gets back for the majority of the wave. Meanwhile, 3v3 in mid lane. Don't overextend into a control ward brush. Uh, dancing back and forth, the stun's gonna land, good damage, Who's gonna crash down and hope it's enough. Ignore is ignited, and that's gonna be a kill onto Viego. Ignite's gonna work as well. The no! Sonic Wave and Resonating Strike closer is still. And the other side of it is, how does your 1v1 look in the bottom lane? It's the other half bit sometimes, is who he blast plants over and doesn't get too much of the Hex Flash crash him, but wait a second. Oh, oh that was <laughs> such a sick Kick flash. Being able to pull off this bottom side play, having access to his kick, pulls off the flash kick. Player to also try and instigate the opponent team <laughs> to flame their jungler. You know, you type little question marks. Here we Ooh, go. This boy is about to Ooh. die. Sven Skaren's good for two. On someday. Meanwhile, mid lane fishing going on here, and Ignar is the fish. That is a crash down. That is a decent <laughs> stun. Oh my word, it just keeps happening. There's just nothing you can do about it. The CC combo, who he and closer together. I Gonna mean, be able to snowball this one quite effectively. And that's the thing about Viega, though. He's 3,000 years, right? Because he's oh, every God. champion at the same time. Uh, Lucian down here as well as Abadaga is off the rise onto the LeBlanc. Trading okay. If you have eyeballs and hands, as the kids say. Yes. Able to dodge. Ooh, ult puts him in a tower range, actually. Cyan, I believe, also went for the point blank ult for some CC. Round two? Not, I mean, much Round two? just yet. Yeah, Botrid is going to die, so 610 gold out of FBI. Mininar. And yes, they are going for the top side dive. This is going to be 3-4-3. Three, three. Evil Genius will get kills on exactly one place, and that is top lane. Turns out they sub Sven Skarin in just to kill someday, over and over and over again. Viego gets another one, but... The costs are so huge, Freak. There's always a chance you can cross-map them on the Dragon. The problem is Ziggs is on that side of the map already. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting because I, I too, would make this call for EG and say, hey, just never mind. Oh, you're going to take it. The kick is almost the flash. <laughs> e, oh, my. So much credit to Closer, both from yep. Champ Select, but all, all of the games. Uh, they have played so far. Now continuing in on the invade. Looks like Abadage wants a piece on the LeBlanc. You get too close, he's going to pop somebody. For a smite fight, maybe. Sven is not going to get the chance to go in there. Yep. Get the Magnus Storm and just all of the damage. Close is good for one. FBI gets number two. They get LeBlanc all the way over there. And while it is one turret play mine for Jazuke. Oh, that is a nice knockup, though. Impact is ready for it. Pre-charge, got the stop, but someday's already here, and that man is angry. And get their priority for the top side of the map, but they even are rewarded for the rotation towards mid. Yeah, you stick around, you get a few minions, but they're going to get the Rift out regardless because Suzuki is pinned bottom. No teleports available for the Lucian. Objective acquired, 400 Thieves. Mid lane's going to die. <laughs> True facts. Yeah, next Freak one Freak <laughs> spin facts once again. They want that of the charge, but I think they have all the control they need to make sure the rest of it happens. And indeed, FBI is going to have three turret takedowns to his name. Counts, kills, and assists, keep in mind. We'll see if they can get the mid-charge. It should be unlikely. Actually, if they control enough space, it's not going to be quite smiteable. Oh, uh, that's enough damage. It's in spite range, and they're going to keep that from... To get an ult flash play on him. But you have to be careful when you go for that because... But you can see the split push is still looking okay. Jazuke spending a lot of time in the side lane, has a CS lead, has still a level deficit, but has gotten the bot lane out of turret. So two on the board for Evil Geniuses. 100 Thieves beginning the Baron play, and EG have to answer. 
How good is this going to look? Keep in mind, Ziggs ult plus smite is a lot of damage for the combo. Who he sets up on a two. Big damage. Will they one shot Sven Skara? Not quite. Meganar is in. Ults in the wall. That's two stuns, and that's the jungler down. And it's going to be impact next up. He cannot get away, and he will become a zombie yet again. And it's time to walk back, kite it out, and look at round two of Baron, because guess what? The ults are down, the jungler's dead. Just a beautiful engage from Huhi right there. You, he not only sets them up for killing both frontline members, but also gets the teleport from Jizuke. So they get their kills, they get their Baron, they burn the teleport cooldown off of the important split push member from EG, yep. the, the Lucian. Well, maybe they don't get the Baron. EG are coming around How for a last ditch effort. This? If, da if Danny was able to get a bomb in there or something. <laughs> oh, that's season damage out of Danny, but it's just not going to matter. He forces the little Blanc passive. And this should be Cloud Soul, as well as the recall coming out of Lucian. All right. If they reset Jazuke, I guess they, they won't have to. He'll try. It's warded. Despite some time. Two more rivals of those. It's going to be about time for Abadaga to get all the way to the secondary tower, but they're fighting. A ton of move speed. Team fight going to come across, but the CC Whoa. is ready, and FBI just knocks down Ignar. And it's going to be Sven Skaren dropping as well. Now, Huhi has for the stopwatch, but he's going to be alive. Jizuke now dropped to about 70%. Someday still on the chase. A good ulti by Scion buys more time. Closer not going to be into the back line just yet. Sterex popped. Flash kick, and that top laner will die. A three to the team fight, and oh, in the back line. Abadaga finds his next one as well. The zombie form won't get much else done. <laughs> 15 to 3. Sven Skaren still has 100% of evil genius's kills, but the rest of the team is not up to the task. Baron buffs still on for 15. Cloud Soul in the pocket. And other thieves looking to end the game now. Ignar and Dezuke against the world. Who's going to start that fight now? They are waiting for the respawns. One turret down, second turret under fire. When does the fight happen? Jizuke is pushed out. Second attempt comes across. Will it be enough? The turrets are gone, and Abadaga is already attacking the Nexus. Ulti in for Huhi. That might be enough to knock down Sven Skaren, and it is. And just like that, 100 Thieves have punched a ticket to Worlds. Thank you, Freak. First Worlds qualification for 100 Thieves since 2018. First Worlds appearance for you since your time in the Turkish League in 2019. Closer, how does it feel? Uh, it feels pretty good. I'm, I'm just tired because it's, it was a long day, long series, but in the end, we won, so it feels pretty good. Yeah, long series, lots of highs and lows, depending on what side you're looking at it from. Can you tell me a bit of how you and the rest of your teammates were handling that, maybe the discussions that were going on between games? Yeah, I mean, today was a big day for us. I wanted to play with, like, no regrets. That's why I had good games, and I entered a lot of games today. I in, a lot of position as well, but in the end, I, like, to be honest, losing game four was pretty sad, but it wasn't over for us, so... I'm glad that everyone could focus and not get affected by game four in game five because we basically threw the series on, like we could have just end, ended earlier. But yeah, happy overall. That is a very hard note to come from and make sure that you are mentally clear going into game five. They also threw the jungle swap at you. I know the yeah. desk was talking about that they figured it was because of the Viego comfort for Sven Skaren. I think so. Yeah, you yeah. think so? Yeah, I, I think they wanted to take Viego away, and I think Contracts wasn't comfortable with it. That's why they put Sven Skaren and take Viego away. Is there any other things that you had to consider when jungling against Sven Skaren versus Contracts, just in terms of controlling the map? Not really, because the junglers doesn't really matter. It's just like a, we, we wanted to play around mid matchup and basically decided the series today. And yeah, that was it. Zoning a bit more on your individual play, though, you have been named player of the series. There is a lot of great stuff coming from you for games of Viego yeah. before having to switch over to Lee Sin. I know social media was talking about, oh, Viego being broken, but also Closer being broken here today. <laughs> uh, just what was it like being able to pilot that pick from game to game, but then having to make the switch? Um, I was kind of surprised after game one that I thought they will try to take Viego away or not like contest the pick, but they gave me like four games in a row Viego and tried to take it away game five. But I was ready for both sides of the jungle matchup, like any jungle matchup. I think we prepared well for today and yeah, 
<laughs> the thing is, the journey for you and the rest of the team here on the LCS is not done, though. We have yeah. the match tomorrow between Team Liquid and TSM. You're facing one of the opponents. First of all, what do you think of that matchup? Um, I actually have no idea who's going to win. Two strong teams. And um, yeah, I'm guessing like 3 2 TSM, but you never know. I know a few weeks ago in your interview with Travis Gafford, you talked about that C9 were the team you were most scared of because mm -hmm. of the way that they play around yeah. Blabber. We've seen some evolutions across the board, though. Has your opinion changed on you, who you consider to be the hottest contender? I mean, I think it's, it's all about play styles. I knew that C9 is going to lose to other teams probably, and they will play like, I, I won't say they will beat us or something, but they would probably match better with us because of like how we play, how they play. And so far, they went to the loser brackets, and yeah, I, I'm still curious who's going to come from the loser brackets. Yeah, a lot to still be determined yeah. here in the playoff run. Closer, congratulations Thank again you. to you and the rest of the team for not just winning the series, but qualifying for Worlds. Yeah. What a wonder it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody, we do still have more LCS to come. On the other side of the break, we will have a loser interview with Danny from the EG side. But as we go, enjoy this teaser of Next Level. Control.